Animal Emergency goes behind the scenes at some of the most sophisticated veterinarian clinics in Singapore, revealing the dedicated work of these medical professionals as they save the lives of Singapore's cherished animals. This week, a macaque monkey's life hangs in the balance following a knee injury that takes a turn for the worse. The chances of her surviving will be very, very slim. Then we head to the turf club where the specialist equine vet team save a racehorse from permanent retirement. It's not so easy to move them around, get them in position. That's all ahead on Animal Emergency. It's late afternoon at McGritchie Park, and a badly injured macaque monkey, suspected of having been hurt in a fight, is found by a member of the public who contacts the animal rescue team at Acres. Acres responds quickly and takes the injured animal for immediate medical treatment. The rescued monkey is given the name Maya by her saviors. The hospital manages to stabilize Maya, but upon closer physical examination, the doctors have uncovered a more serious problem that without immediate medical attention will be life-threatening. Okay. Have a good day. So give them a date for the allergy test. Dr. Lai, a local veterinarian who has specialist experience with wild animals, having worked as a consultant with the Singapore Zoo for 10 years, quickly establishes a diagnosis. Mia definitely needs an emergency operation because her pelvis was caved in. She was having some trouble passing motion. Um, she wasn't emptying completely and she was badly infected. Acres established an initiative to create public awareness on how to coexist with macaque monkeys. As part of that objective, funds were allocated to assist with medical treatment of injured monkeys like Maya. Most monkeys, we really don't rescue them. They're very hardy animals. Um, if there's slight injuries, they can survive and they can recuperate themselves, recuperate back in the wild. But again, with Maya's case, it's very different because the injuries were so severe and her health deteriorated pretty badly. That's why we made a decision to take her in, to rescue her, send her to Dr. Lai for the surgery. The rescuers from Acres will join Dr. Lai for Maya surgery today. Dr. Lai has cleared his last patient for the day and put aside all other cases to attend to Maya surgery. And he is happy to subsidize the cost of surgery. This is the surgical ward of the Animal Recovery Center. Unexpected emergencies like this. With the arrival of the rescuers from Acres, the team moves quickly to start the long process of saving Maya. Maya is not used to human contact, and the vets take extra care to handle her. Before her operation, Maya has to undergo a series of pre-surgical procedures. The team has to be careful not to further aggravate Maya's injury. Anesthetizing Maya for long periods of surgery is risky. Monkeys are small animals and lose body heat quickly. The team must complete their job as quickly as possible to prevent hypothermia setting in. If that should happen and Maya's body temperature drops to a critical level, she will go into cardiac arrest and may die. Putting this tube down the throat is called endotracheal intubation. This will allow Maya to breathe during the long hours on the operating table. 
Dr. Lai checks Maya's vital signs. And to prevent any damage to her eyes, the team must constantly moisturize Maya's lids. This will prevent her eyes from drying out because under anesthesia, animals don't blink. The team is concerned that Maya may have additional nerve damage and need to investigate further. His pelvic inlet is narrowed. Plus, he's got multiple superficial injuries that are also infected. The reason why this leg is bent and partially fused because all the muscles have contracted, because it's affect, the fracture there has affected the sciatic nerve. So I need to try and peel off the sciatic nerve and I need to get this leg straight. There's no fracture here, you know, which is fortunate. It's got a lot of injuries in this. Oh yeah, the arm is almost there. Hmm. What is this? What is this? Now I was very afraid that if we leave it for too long, the skin itself will, will contract, so we may not have enough skin to cover the raw areas. Part of the pre-surgery process involves shaving off Maya's fur, where the incision will be made. Maya's body is found to be suffering from several lacerations. Well, she looks stronger today than the other day. Yeah. Color is better. She put a little bit away. Her hydration is okay. Now to make sure she she doesn't die of the injuries. Wounds huh? everywhere. Mia needs to live. We're trying to save them all in Singapore, 1,900 of them. But I think you always hear the quote, um, a single drop makes an ocean. And if we can save Maya, that's one step forward in terms of making a difference from these monkeys here. Dr. Lai carefully massages Maya's legs to loosen the muscles. But I'm not going to be able to overcome it without fracturing the leg. I need you guys to take this over after a month or so. Yep. So what I did was overcome the contracture, maybe break down some scarring, early scarring. And that was good because I didn't have to use too much force. So obviously this wasn't there for a very long time. Luckily, otherwise, just by doing that, you can actually fracture the bone or tear the muscle off. Maya's pre-surgery process is complete. But will she survive the next stage, an estimated four-hour-long surgery, or will she succumb to her injuries? I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. At the Turf Club Equine Veterinary Hospital, racehorses arrive as early as 8 a.m. for vitamin injections, injury treatments, and general checkups. But when any one of these champion athletes injures a leg, there's immediate cause for concern. Yesterday morning, my house has got a problem, the leg. Then when I see the bone is a problem. So I called my trainer. He said this was going to go operation on Thursday morning. I said, oh my God, because the house want to run next week. On Tuesday morning, he did a bit of gallop, bit of work. We call it uh, pace work. And uh, when he got back from the gallop, we noticed that he was walking a bit sore. We got hold of the vet straight away. The horse was diagnosed that he had to go for surgery. Ricardo immediately notifies Dr. Curry, one of the 10 international in-house vets at the Singapore Turf Club, to quickly assess the horse's medical condition. The horse may have stumbled during work. He may have just overextended his fetlock. And you can see a large amount of swelling. So after we take these x-rays, um, 
identify a, a new chip, we then schedule them in for surgery, which we will do today. It has been discovered that the horse is suffering from a bone chip on his front fetlock. The fetlock is the joint area on its lower leg. If left untreated, this type of fracture might lead to degenerative joint disease and the end of his racing career. Before any surgery can take place, the horse's shoes need to be removed. Once the shoes are off, Dr. Curry and his team act quickly to prepare the horse for his surgery. Thanks, Thomas. So there's a lot of people involved in the surgery, maybe eight direct people. Depending on the extent of the fetlock injury, racehorses can lose the strength in their legs and the injury will spread to other parts of the leg. So immediate treatment is essential. I just place a catheter into the horse jugular vein. Um, the purpose of the catheter is for the vets later on to administer fluids or drugs in an easier manner during surgery. The team takes additional care when placing the sterilized catheter to prevent bacterial infection which can often result in lethal consequences. I hope it's nothing of the leg. La. I hope he's fine very, very fast because I want to see him run. Dr. Oliver is given the tranquilizer. In a minute, he'll give another drug, the induction. And you'll see, but don't come inside the door, you'll see the horse go down. Anesthetizing a 450 kilogram racehorse requires four men to hold him before the drug kicks in. It takes mere seconds for the horse to succumb. He's now been induced with chemical anesthesia, injectable. Dr. Oliver is going to put a nasogastric tube down his throat, and he'll go on inhalation anesthesia. Next, we'll pick him up. We'll move him back onto this table. Fixing an injury to a horse's leg is always tricky. There is no guarantee that the horse will heal completely and be able to race again. It is now up to Dr. Curry and his team to assure this thoroughbred a future. Over at the Animal Recovery Center, Maya the monkey has been in surgery for almost three hours. It takes precision and skill to work with small primates like Maya. Dr. Lai and his team begin stitching Maya's many lacerations on her wounded leg and other parts of her body to prevent any further infections. Having taken care of her numerous open wounds, Dr. Lai now begins work on the critical part, Maya's fractured pelvis. This is a very delicate operation. The surgeons insert titanium plates and screws to hold Maya's broken hip together. After almost five hours, the operation is finally over. The team now has to wait and see if their surgery on Maya is a success. The last time they know, it was very tight. 
I can't guarantee its future, but I can guarantee its present. We're going to get it well, let nature take its course, and that's all we can do. We're back at the Turf Club Equine Veterinary Hospital, and Dr. Curry is about to begin the fetlock surgery. The success of this operation on the leg will determine if this champion racehorse will ever race again. This entire delicate procedure, which is known as endoscopy or keyhole surgery, will only take about 20 minutes. Dr. Curry begins the operation by inserting a scope with a powerful light source into the cavity to visually examine the extent of the injury. That looked quite big on camera, but it's not really that big. So after we remove all the bigger fragments, we go in and I remove all the rough edges, which is quite challenging and quite hard. You can imagine carrying a rider plus 450 kilograms of weight at that speed. They can travel at speeds of 70 kilometers an hour. In order to withstand those pressures, it has to become very hard. A television monitor which magnifies the cavity area helps guide Dr. Curry while he maneuvers an instrument in the joint and skillfully grabs all the loose bone fragments. By removing the broken bone fragments, the inflammation in the horse's fetlock area caused by the bone chips will hopefully heal, enabling this champion to return to action. This will heal in seven to 10 days. Without having to make a large insertion, there is no risk of further damaging the leg. Despite having his bone chips removed, the horse is not out of the woods yet. He will still need time to regain his proper bearings and recuperate before he is back to his racing form again. The horse is not like a person. He's got to recover from anesthesia uh, in a padded room by himself. They can have excitatory phases. They can thrash around. It depends on the horse's personality. The surgery is over. Dr. Curry is confident that this champion racehorse will heal very well. Back at Dr. Lai's medical facility, Maya the macaque monkey has made it through surgery and is on the way to post-op care. Lucky for Maya, her post-op x-ray shows that the operation was a success. Still unconscious, Maya is carefully transferred to the intensive care unit for monitoring and rest. It's now two weeks following Maya's knee surgery. In order to make a full recovery, Maya will need to attend physiotherapy for 15 minutes a day to strengthen her muscles. It is the beginning of a recovery that will take an estimated four weeks. From time to time, the team allow Maya outside her chambers so she can move freely on her own. This will help her regain muscle strength quicker So the goal here is not to keep her in captivity for, say, the rest of her life, but after the surgery to release her back into the wild, um, introduce her back to her troop as well, and hopefully they will accept her and 
It's the happily ever after story that we're looking for now. At the holding area, the horse recovers from his anesthesia and goes back to the stables. Now you see he's quiet, he's hungry, he want to eat. Here we go, here we go. Come, come. Following the success of his keyhole surgery, the horse will rest from training and undergo physiotherapy for the next few months. Slowly wait, slowly wait. Probably three to five months, he'll be back in racing. Hopefully he comes back, he'll start to do even better. While fetlock injury is an occupational hazard with racehorses, with any luck, this champion will find his form and continue to race for years to come.